I'm Roger Bomrick. Welcome to this video version of my fine wine essay for WineAuctionPrices.com. This episode is entitled Oak and Wine, All About Barrels. Wine has an affinity for wood. In a manner of speaking, they are fraternal twins, each originating with a plant molded by soil, sunshine, and rain. At the outset, a barrel was simply a practical container for storage and transport, gradually supplanting the amphora, linchpin of the ancient world. Barrels have been used to hold water, nails, gunpowder, salted meats, flour, pickles, and countless other substances. Wood of many types, including cherry and chestnut, has been employed to make wine barrels. Oak has been fashioned into wine containers for roughly 2,000 years. The French were fortunate to have their own extensive oak forests, which currently enjoy an unrivaled reputation. Hungarian and Eastern European oak has also found favor during many periods of history. Italians have relied on oak from nearby Slovenia. Distinctive American oak has been preferred by winemakers as far away as Spain and Australia. There are, in fact, many species of oak tree around the world belonging to the genus Quercus. Three main species are utilized for wine containers. Quercus robur, referred to as pedunculate oak, is found across much of Europe. It is rich in phenols and elagitanins. Quercus patrea, commonly called sessile or cecile oak, grows from the far northern Iberian Peninsula to southern Scandinavia. This species contains a somewhat lower level of elagitanins, but is well endowed with lactones and eugenol. Sessile and pedunculate oaks provide the material for most French wine barrels, which enjoy disproportionate prestige across the globe. Another significant oak for wine, as well as bourbon and whiskey, Quercus alba, comes from eastern North America and the Midwest, extending to lower Canada. American White oak is lower in tannins, yet significantly richer in vanilla-like compounds than its French counterparts. However, these generalizations, studies show, fail to reveal that properties vary to a large degree among trees of the same species. That said, it has been found that Sessile oak is richer in sweet triterpenes and poorer in the bitter one than pedunculate oak. The remarkable French forests which supply the world's most admired wine barrels have been called the treasure of Jean-Baptiste Colbert, a 17th century statesman. Colbert viewed France's forests as a source of immense richness. They had both economic and military significance. He saw them as indispensable, the source of wood to construct the country's naval vessels. Strict rules governing forest management were introduced in 1669. Interrupted only by the French Revolution, this diligent husbandry by the state, has extended over three centuries and continues in the present day under the Office National des Forêts. If you enjoy the qualities of a Pomerol, Chambon Musigny, Super Tuscan, 
or Napa Meritage, all of which have undoubtedly been enhanced by aging in French oak casks, thanks are due in part to Colbert. A French cooper such as Seguin Moreau has inventory of wood to cover three years of sales. French oak is first dried in the open air for a period of 24 months as a rule, while 36 months is less common and commands a price premium. This implies the raw wood must be acquired up to four years ahead of delivery of a barrel. In view of strong demand for oak from wineries and distillers, prices have been increasing for both American and French barrels. Genevieve Janssen's chief winemaker at Robert Mondavi Winery explains that a new barrel of 60 U.S. gallons currently costs $900. She says that, quote, if that barrel matured one vintage, the cost per bottle would be $3. But if it's used for at least three vintages, the cost comes down to $1 per bottle, unquote. For some time, the focus has been on the significance of origin, the forest where the wood is grown. For both oak tree and vine, the role of place or terroir seems fundamental. Yet, the names of most forests are unknown to wine amateurs. A very few, such as Troncé, seem to achieve special, special status. But only specialists have heard of Belle Branche, Chateauroux, or Hesse. While forest identity retains intuitive appeal. Attention in the trade has been shifting to the question of grain. Andrei Prita of Seguin Moreau points out that the tightness of the grain, the width of the annual growth rings of the tree, is related to species. In general, fine grain wood is understood to have less than three millimeters between rings. Fine an extra fine grain wood comes predominantly from sessile oak, whereas coarse grain is associated mainly with the pedunculate species. It is nonetheless important to underline that species, not grain width, serves as a more accurate indicator of the wood's chemical composition. This being said, a study by Shen et Compagnie showed that tight grain discharges more aromatic compounds than coarse or open grain. Taking this a step further, the significance of any given forest may be overstated in terms of dictating the characteristics of the finished barrel. Prida notes that most French forests contain both sessile and pedunculate species. Some say that the hand of the cooper, specifically the curing of the staves and the toasting process, has the greatest impact. It may count more if the barrel is crafted by François Frère or Taranceau than if the wood comes from the Troncé forest in Allier or Bertrange in Burgundy. This is, it seems, just another version of a familiar debate, nature versus nurture, which cannot be neatly resolved. The question may be moot to the extent Coopers create branded blends from different forests for a single barrel, such as the Omega of Radu or Segamo's Icon. Here we see 
in this photograph the Omega barrel which is a blend of woods from French forest matured for three years using a proprietary technique oak scan the staves are selected based on a polyphenolic index next pictured here is the Econ Elegance barrel of Seguin Moreau produced from oak selected for its chemical properties and enological potential. This model is intended for concentrated red wines such as those based on Cabernet Sauvignon or Syrah. Winemakers around the world often buy barrels from numerous suppliers ensuring a diversity of both wood and coopering techniques. Apart from forest or grain, barrel size and age also govern the interplay of wood and wine. A smaller new barrel will have a far more pronounced effect than a larger one which has matured multiple vintages. There is a certain standardization of barrel formats offered by cooperages. This is logical because barrels need some type of support. Racks are designed to fit standard barrel dimensions and remain in place even as barrels are replaced. Perhaps the most universal barrel in terms of usage worldwide is the Bordeaux Barrique holding 225 liters, which is usually offered in slightly varied iterations. The 228 liter PS is the standard in Burgundy. At first glance, these two models appear nearly identical, yet have subtle differences. For example, the Chateau Tradition barrel from Radu has staves 95 centimeters in length and 20 to 22 millimeters in thickness. It weighs 46 kilograms. In contrast, staves of the company's Burgundy Tradition are 88 centimeters long and 25 to 27 millimeters thick. This barrel weighs 48 kilograms. The bilge of the burgundy barrel, diameter of the center, is larger than the Bordeaux Barrique, 72.2 centimeters as opposed to 69.5. Simply put, the burgundy barrel is shorter the long way and wider around the middle as we can see pictured here. The Bordeaux Chateau 225 liter barrel on the left and the Bourgogne Caveau 228 liter, liter barrel on the right, both from Tonnerie Hermitage. Casts of other capacities such as 300, 500 and 600 liters are in general if more limited use as well. What exactly are the consequences of fermenting and aging wine in barrel? In essence, a barrel enriches the wine. For many wine drinkers, the focus is on the more obvious aromas conveyed by compounds extracted from oak. Lactones may be perceived as coconut or simply fresh wood. Vanillin, a phenolic aldehyde, brings vanilla to mind. Eugenol is perceived as clove, while guaiacol may suggest spices or smoke. Charring or toasting the interior of the barrel induces roasted or even bitter almond of furfural. Other effects of heating by fire 
as we see depicted here, may be perceived as licorice, burnt sugar, or caramel. While these aromas are the makings of tasting notes, the gradual and controlled oxygenation of the wine, aided by elagitanins, may have more fundamental benefits, as illustrated by this model. Oxygen enters the barrel through the bunghole, the joints between staves, and the wood itself, which acts as a membrane. Racking and topping up are contributors. Tannins and anthocyanins, the pigment of red wine, combine, resulting in a more stable color and the softening of the tannins. Moreover, polysaccharides coming from the wood give a sensation of richness or fat and further lessen astringency. There is, as well, a loss due to evaporation, romantically termed the angel's share. Consequently, the wine becomes more concentrated. The temperature and humidity of the cellar play a part in these changes. Finally, a barrel encourages natural clarification as unstable compounds fall to the bottom. The transformations brought about by oxygen are comparatively subtle, yet appreciably enhance and complete the wine if the maturation process is skillfully managed. Barrels are far from static containers. They are interactive partners in the winemaking process. What is more, the barrel has taken on symbolic meaning for many wine lovers who expect to see a cellar filled with casks at any winery. Yet, there are significant exceptions. All wines may be restyled by wood to varying degrees, but not all are better as a result. Many aromatic whites, based on Riesling or Sauvignon Blanc, to name just two, do not benefit from contact with oak. Likewise, a few Chardonnay of Dupop reds see only concrete. That said, the consensus holds that the finest red wines only fulfill their greatest potential if they are refined in barrel. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to visit wineauctionprices.com to read the full essay, to look at the photographs, and especially the model and perhaps also have a look at the many other essays that you'll find on the site. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.